Pour yourself a cold one. They strike them, huh? And listen to Russ Tucker break down the top college prospects on another tasty edition of The College Draft. Yeah, it is Daddy Soda time here on the College Draft Podcast presented by YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL where all of your wildest dreams can come true or at least where you can see all of the awesome videos we have from the Fantasy Feast podcast, the Even Money podcast, the Ross Tucker football podcast. Pretty cool actually to see the highlight clips, the best of the best from all of those shows. And this show, the College Draft Podcast, where we now not only break down the top prospects and some of the biggest games in college football, we also are able to bet the games against the spread. And Emory Hunt from Football Game Plan does exactly that. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years, at Ross Tucker NFL, across the board on social media. And we are at Ross Tucker Pod. He is Emery Hunt at F Ball Game Plan on Twitter. Football Game Plan on YouTube where he's like, you know how you see all these teenagers that say they want to be a YouTuber? Like that's what they want to do for a living. They want to be a YouTuber. That's Emery. He is a YouTuber. Like Emery does make his living in addition to about a million other things. CBS HQ and games for Morgan State and George, a million things. But, like, Emery makes a good living from YouTube. He's like a real-life YouTuber. YouTube football game plan on YouTube. Footballgameplan.com slash 2021 draft guide. That is where it's at. It's the point now where I see people asking Emery on Twitter about, like, random dudes nobody's ever heard of because they know Emery will be able to give them a scouting report. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. At F ball game plan. Good morning, Emery. Good morning, sir. You you say I'm the YouTube star. You're the viral star of the weekend, man. I was rooting for you just like how you were rooting for uh Patterson to get that record, man. That was oh awesome. my <laughs> gosh, dude. That was you got to understand, okay? And for those of you that didn't get a chance to see it, please check out uh I, it's up on my Twitter, it, my posts about a million times. I, I retweeted people that were tweeting about it at Ross Tucker NFL, or I posted it this morning to you, uh, to Instagram and to Facebook. So at Ross Tucker NFL for both of those. Emery. First of all, Jarrett Patterson is the humble, most humble, greatest kid ever. He's one heck of a football player. Their offensive line is awesome because some of those touchdowns he wasn't even touched on. But he is a special runner. I want to get your breakdown of him. But Emery, he takes the field, okay? And he's got like, they're like at the 40-yard line. He's got 390, now 380, 389, I think. They give him a couple carries. He's now at 409, and they're on like the 19-yard line. The all-time record is 427, Samaj P. Ryan. So if he gets the last 19 yards, he breaks the all-time record for running backs ever in Division I football. And by the way, he already had eight touchdowns, which is the all-time record tied with Howard Griffith. So on one run, he was going to break both records all-time Division I football. They have him in. They give him a carry. They give him another carry. And then, as people saw in the video, obviously, I, I talked to Lance Leipold, the UB coach after the game. Awesome guy. He didn't know. He wasn't aware. Nobody let him know. Although, I think it's a little weird he was on that last drive. I think maybe they knew he could get 400 and they wanted to get him 400. But I don't think they knew about the touchdown record or that 427 was the all-time record. And it was like, was like within grasp, right? And, uh, well, needless to say, Emery, I did not take it very well. Because I really wanted to see history. And, and and honestly, half of me was kind of messing around, joking around at that yeah. point. But, I mean, everybody tuned in to watch history. And unfortunately, you know, we're, we're up there in the press box. I got a stat guy next to me. You know, we're putting it on the screen. You know this, Emery. You're a coach. You're down there. You're not thinking about records and stuff like that. 
listen, I, and this is funny because last year, you know, I, I do Monmouth games as well. But for the playoff game against James Madison, it was the ESPN crew that was there. So I'm at home watching the game and they're running back Pete Guerrero, who's now with the Carolina Panthers, had a tremendous season. He was five yards away from 2,000 yards, right? So the, the first carry of the game, he had a 94-yard touchdown run. So he was well on his way to getting that. So by the time it was the third quarter, he was only five yards away and didn't get a carry. And so I'm texting the um, the SID at Mama. I'm like, yo, somebody let Coach know he's five yards away from getting 2,000. And by the time they get, get him, they get the methods to Coach, it's like three or four minutes left in the game. And they finally put him back in to get the 2,000, and he loses five yards. And then he gains five yards again, but the game ends. And so now he finished the season with 1,995 yards. I was going crazy at home trying to get someone to get Coach Callahan to say, hey, all right, put him back in. Let's just get him these 2,000 yards. But it didn't work out for him. Yeah, I mean – Wow, maybe that maybe the SID for UB wasn't aware either. I don't know if they have the audio on in the press box. I I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not here to play the blame game at all. Uh, it was an unbelievable effort by Patterson. I don't know if we've talked about it, Emery. What's your breakdown of Patterson as a back? He's tremendous. He has great footwork, and you know I, I have a tweet that I had when he was a freshman. I was like, you know what? I like this dude Patterson. He just always gains yards, and it's when you watch him run, you're watching a guy that, that understands blocking assignments, which is critical. Um, his, he has the feet to get him there and the eyes to keep him on, on track. And so that's why he's always doing a great job. And, and you know, yeah, he has, uh, you know, he has good speed, he has good burst, but the vision footwork and understanding of, of blocking assignments is something that's the special trait of his, his game, because it, it takes a while for a running back to really understand, you know, what the defense is trying to do from a front standpoint, how the blocking scheme is supposed to work and to also have the patience. That's why he's had these, you know, these tremendous games over the course of his career. So I do see him as a guy at the next level. That'd be a, that'll, that'll be a great, you know, RB two, a great, you know, complimentary back because you want to see how well he does in pass pro. You want to see how well he does um, in blitz pickup. You want to see how well he does, you know, from, a receiving standpoint outside of your standard swing screens, flares and flats. So uh, from a running standpoint, he definitely has that Deion Lewis trait to his, to his game. And so that's what I kind of see him as a Deion Lewis type, which is fantastic because Deion Lewis is what in his 10th year in the league. So that's a good uh, run for a guy like Patterson. I'm a big fan of his game have been since he stepped foot on campus. You know, nobody ever gets a good shot on him. But that's the thing I noticed. Like he had 36 carries. I don't think he took one really hard shot. Like he always, you know, whether it's the jump cut or just a little lateral slide, nobody gets a good shot on him. I mean, it's really that that is an art, man. That is an art. I played fullback one year and it felt like everybody got a good shot on me <laughs> every time I got the ball. I mean, I was just, I would just put my head down and run just dude just blasting me. I had no shake, no wiggle. I, I I guess I should have opened my eyes a little bit more. I don't know, but oh man. Um, all right. So anyway, that's the Jarrett Patterson story from the weekend. Check that out on social at Ross Tucker NFL. Let's dive into some of these games and we'll start Emory in the SEC. Arkansas and Missouri. Missouri's favored by three and a half. Let's start on the D line. With Jonathan Marshall. You talk about who's going to be this year's, let's say, Javon Kinlaw in terms of who's going to, you know, wreck the combine. It's going to be him. You know, he is a tremendous athlete. I'm talking about weight room savant as far as what he could do on the bench. We could do from a vertical standpoint. I think he has like a 35 inch vertical. Um, so he is a tremendous athlete and he, it's finally starting to come together for him on the field. And when you're that explosive, uh, you're going to find yourself in the backfield. We saw a guy last year make a late rise um, for Arkansas. You know, he was, he was playing well, and then he got into the all-star circuit and just blew it up, went from the Shrine game to the Senior Bowl, and then was at the Combine, did well. Now he's with the Denver Broncos. Uh, his name slips me right now, but he had a tremendous, you know, 
late season run that worked out well for him. Uh, but you also see the same things right here. You see a guy that that definitely has the the skill set, and you know he always had the athleticism. But now you're seeing it translate to the field, which bodes well for his his prospects moving forward. What about Missouri, where you noted not one but two safeties for the Tigers? Yeah, and here's the thing. When you talk about Tyree Gillespie and Joshua Bledsoe in this era of, of positionless football, right, you're talking about interchangeable safeties, guys that are able to play the alley very well. They find plays behind the line of scrimmage. They're very good open field tacklers, and they have the, the speed and acceleration to close on the football in the passing game. So both guys are tremendous talents um, at safety, and Missouri has quietly produced some really good defensive football players since they moved to the SEC, let's put it that way. Uh, so they got two good safeties in Gillespie and, and Bledsoe, guys that are interchangeable, those combo safeties that we like uh, in, in today's positionless defense where guys can be on the field for all three downs and really be impactful on both ends of defense. Those are the two safeties um, that that that's that, that describes both of those safeties uh, for Missouri. So I want you to hit hit that hard, Emory, for people. Why safeties being interchangeable is so important? Because we we grew up where you had a free safety and a strong safety, and nowadays with the advent of spread football, you really don't classify guys as free or strong safeties anymore. Some guys may do one. A little bit better than the other but you want guys that can be out there and match up against a bigger tight end a bigger wide receiver or a you know athletic tight end that's that we call a flex tight end a guy that's kind of like a receiver type uh, more so than a blocker you want to be able to match up against those guys let's say a mike jasicki would be uh would be one um that you can see a safety like these two guys matching up with so you don't necessarily have to take them off the field and if you're a combo guy that means you're able to to hold your own in coverage, zone coverage, um, and also play close to the line of scrimmage. You can blitz off the edge, so you can get versatile with those guys. And when you have that position versatility or flexibility, it keeps you versatile as a defense. So you know how, let's say from an offensive perspective, if you're bringing in three tight ends and you look at the tight ends they bring in, you're like, okay, this nine times ten is going to be a run play because these are their blocking tight ends. But if you bring in a guy on the defensive side that if you're able to keep your original personnel your base personnel out there on the field, you never know what the coverage is. You never know what their plan is because those guys that you have out there are able to do multiple things. What do you think about this game with Missouri laying three and a half points over at DraftKings, Emory? You know, Missouri quietly has played some good football, man. I like their freshman quarterback and what he has done growing in a position of really good run game. Uh, defensive line play has, has excelled. I think, we just talked about those two safeties. I think they're going to be a problem for Arkansas. And I like Arkansas's ability to throw the football, but I think this is going to be a tight game. So I like that point spread. So I'm going to lay those points with Missouri. All right. So Emory's laying the three and a half with Missouri against Arkansas. Let's get to Kansas and Texas Tech. Texas Tech favored by 26 and a half. We'll start with Kansas linebacker Kyron Johnson. And he's your classic uh, run and chase linebacker. Uh, he's about 6'2", you know, 220. He can run. He can cover, man coverage, zone coverage. I, I like his athleticism. Uh, that's going to be prominent in this ball game, as we know Texas Tech loves to spread the field. But he also is going to be able to, to chase down the tremendous tailback we're going to talk about. So I do like Johnson's ability to be an athlete. And anytime you have that athleticism, that fluid athleticism, uh, at that position, a weak side backer type, that's going to help you out moving forward at the next level, where, whether it's a, a spot duty guy uh, or a special team ace, he can run. And as long as you can run uh, and cover in today's NFL, you're going to have yourself an opportunity to play. Meanwhile, for Texas Tech, surprise, surprise, you got a running back you want to talk about. This this Watching this dude run reminds me of those Spike Dykes uh, Texas Tech teams where, where you had Bam Morris, you know, Byron Hansford, yeah, Ricky Williams, you know, those guys, those type of backs um, in the backfield that he was just running the football, just bludgeoning you to death. And Sir Roderick Thompson, to me, has quiet yet busy footwork. Uh, and he's always finding a way to get himself out of a jam. You talk about Jared Patterson's ability to not take a direct shot. 
That's a Roderick Thompson. And he has very good bursts. Um, his feet are, are busy, but they're not as violent as a Marshawn Lynch, but they're just as effective as far as him being able to subtly work front side to backside to evade a defender, get skinny in the hole and burst through it. Uh, so you like all of those things about Thompson and watching that game last week against Oklahoma State. I was like, man, you know, between him and Ramondi, Ramondre uh, Stevenson at Oklahoma, those are two Sunday type backs. And, you know, I know uh, Thompson has another year, uh, whether he comes out this year or, or goes back for his senior season. He's a tremendous tailback. He can catch the ball efficiently out of the backfield, can improve in that area. But his running ability is something that just impressed me, the vision, the footwork and the ability to make guys miss to be a very elusive back, I'm all in on on Thompson. Okay, Texas Tech, 26 and a half, Emery. That's a lot of points, man, over at DraftKings. What do you think? This Kansas we're talking about, so that is like a three-point spread. I think Texas Tech can easily cover this number against the Jayhawks, so definitely land those points with the Red Raiders. Man, I feel like you always lay points. You like laying points, man. I see on your Twitter (laughs) – at F Ball Game Plan, certainly here on the College Draft Podcast. Speaking of college, by the way, college basketball powers have gifted us a top-tier matchup between two powerhouses. This weekend, Gonzaga and Baylor going toe-to-toe for probably the number one ranking. And how about this? DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all college basketball fans who sign up now the chance to win $100 when betting on either Gonzaga or Baylor to win this clash of the Titans. Wow. Plus, you'll get a deposit bonus up to $1,000 when signing up using promo code ROSS. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ROSS when you sign up for your shot to turn $1 into $100 when betting on either Gonzaga or Baylor to win. That's right. Bet $1 to win $100. Use promo code Ross during sign-up to take advantage of these great offers. Limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older in Jersey or PA only. Bonus comprised of a first deposit bonus. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. Emory, let's dive into a huge matchup. Texas A&M staying in the college football playoff conversation. They're laying six and a half points uh, on the road against Auburn. And you got a Texas A&M defensive lineman, Jaden Peavy, you want to talk about. Yeah, I I like Jaden Peavy, man. And again, when guys come in as these four or five-star prospects, the expectation is for guys to hit the field right away and be impact players and become household names. But sometimes guys take a little bit of time to grow and groom and develop into what they are. And that's Jalen Peavy or Jaden Peavy. And what he has done, you know, he can play across the line. He's 6'6", 295. And he's a very disruptive force. And the reason why I chose him to talk about is one, because he has the length, the explosiveness, has good core strength, good point of attack player, and has gotten better. You know, he's improved across the board this year from a production standpoint but his play is going to be key in this ball game because best way to stop auburn is to to get that interior pressure and i'm pretty sure we're going to see a lot of him on the interior up front against auburn's offensive line and with his way to collapse extend and and read and you know redirect to, to follow the run play he's going to have to have a big game i think this is going to be one of those games you saw what they did last week against lsu both their defensive linemen um did a really good job up front. And, you know, I think PV is one that's trekking in the right direction. Uh, you know, whether you take him in the third round or fourth round, definitely with that size and length and ability to play across the board, uh, that's someone that you want on your defensive line, especially within your rotation. Meanwhile, Auburn has a wide receiver, Anthony Schwartz. I haven't seen someone that fast or explosive since Joey Galloway, like uh, just a explosively fluid football speed, you know, and it's like, it's not like, uh, you know, how you watch Alabama's receivers, you know, Waddle and, uh, you know, Watkins and all those guys, Um, you know, it's just, it's a different speed when you watch Swartz play and you know 
once he gets the ball, he legitimately has a chance to go to distance. He can uh, legit run past people when he's tracking the ball deep down the field. And uh, and they used him in that, you know, run game, that, that jet sweep game, which you have to honor and respect because if he gets a corner, might as well get the extra point team ready. Uh, so with his speed, I think he's one of these candidates, too, to come out early and declare. And he's going to he's a legit Olympic track guy. So he's going to run for two, four, three. Um, and when you combine the fact that he's gotten better as a football player uh, since his freshman year, yeah, you want sports on your squad as well. So he, to me, is one of those guys that you watch. Let's say you watch on um, on Sunday. I can only envision him being utilized in San Francisco or Los Angeles with the Rams, someplace like that, or even in New Orleans with the Saints where they use guys in the run game uh, as receivers or just try to find ways to get these guys a the football quickly or in the Saints case, someone that can work well off of a Michael Thomas. So he has a pro fit and a pro future. He's a tremendous talent. Wow. That is high praise. I was teammates with Joey Galloway and he could roll, man. Dude, Joey Galloway was legitimately stronger than me. Wow. Like squat, squat, power clean, Bench press, I think everyone. He was like 200 pounds, and he was stronger than me like in every lift. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. That's crazy. That's that's just explosiveness, man. And and it, it translates on the field. Like watching him just smoothly run past guy. And I don't know if it was the fact that he, you know, when he was rocking that Seahawk blue and silver, that just made him look faster. It, he was just a fluid dude, man. All right. Auburn's getting six and a half. A&M's laying six and a half. Who do you like? Not after what I saw last week, a And M should have blown out LSU, and it was it wasn't as it was closer than what that score indicated, in my opinion. Uh, Auburn has some speed; they, they can, you know. I, I see this one closer than six, so I'm gonna take the points with the Tigers. Wow! All right, Auburn and the points. Okay, I thought you're gonna go the other way. All right, I know you saved the best for last. Your alma mater, Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns. They are playing App State, and your boys are underdogs. I know. They're underdogs by two and a half points. Let's start with talking about Lafayette linebacker. Um, is it Farad or Farad Gardner? Farad Gardner. Farad um, Gardner, all right. Got got that extra year of eligibility, so he came back this year, and he's been tremendous. You know, he can play all three backer spots, but I like him as a wheel backer because he has good vision, a good – acceleration good speed he could blitz he can cover um i think he has gotten better in that regard from a zone perspective he he's fluid to where he can open his hips and run and and cover in man so his development has been right on cue and right on point with the defensive growth and development they've made this year defensively they've been playing really good defense um have the raging cajuns and, and gardner's development and growth Definitely helps him out. Kind of is more of a guy that is a weak side backer at the pro level. Um, Going to be a core special teamer because he's a good, you know, he has good, you know, acceleration, good, able to, to run downfield on kickoffs and and be a good guy in that regard. Uh, but in coverage is where I, I like his prospects because he's grown um, to where he's a strength and not a liability. And again, as a blitzer, he's definitely grown in that area. You saw him have a really good game against Iowa State. He, he's racking up tackles and not just assist tackles, but solo stops. So he's been being a very good point of attack player and doing a good job versus the run. I think he has made the most jump. I know we talk about all the running backs that they have, but he has made the best jump, I believe, uh, in, more than anybody in that program as far as making himself into a pro player. Uh, I've heard of this guy, I think for the last couple of years, App State wide receiver Thomas Hennigan. He plays a pro game, man. Like he's consistent in his route running. He has great body control. Um, he's able to go up at his highest point and, and judge the football. I just I enjoy watching him play because he is so calm in his process and, and how he's able to make the adjustment on a back shoulder throw. Uh, really, you know, go up and, and win a 50 50 ball. He's able to turn that into 70 30 by how he's able to get his body in position and make the play strong hands and and underrated speed kind of like bc johnson uh, for the vikings you know just a, a a solid guy that's under control you could i wouldn't say you know you could look at the, the other vikings receiver and adam thielen but i think thielen is a little bit more fluid 
um, than Hennigan, but but Hennigan has a really good game, man. And you know, a, a pro game, I think he's gonna play for a long time in the league because he's just got so good, such a good body control and his ability to make plays consistently, especially. Uh, and this is the most important key, you know, has a great sense of timing, you know, when it, it's a third down or a red zone play or a need to convert type play, he doesn't flinch, man. And, and when you have a guy that's that, you know, stone cold uh, as far as his process and how he's able to, to lock in in a crucial situation, I, I want him on my team, too. OK. There's no way you're laying the points with App State. There's, you, I, I don't think you're capable of it. App State's laying two and a half points against your alma mater, the Raging Cajuns, Louisiana Lafayette. I would love to know right now. What, okay, are, what are you going to do, Emery? Are you going with your your heart or your head, or do they tell you the same thing? Well, here's the thing. Let me give you a little quick backdrop. The Cajuns have never beaten App State, you know, in, in in what? It's been a while. And App State has been the Debo for the Cajuns uh, recently, has blocked a lot of opportunities for the Cajuns because they couldn't get over the hump. This year, it feels like App State is not at its strongest. And that's why you see the spread at only two and a half. Um, if this was a, 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 a spread that was like six, seven or something like that it, on either side. I, would, eh, I don't know, man, this game will be close, but I think based off what we saw earlier in the season, how the Cajuns handled themselves against coastal Carolina to come back and, and win some tight games. I think they finally break through. So yes, I am laying the points with my Cajuns. I'm taking the points with the Cajuns and getting them to, to get the win. I think they do a good job this year, uh, taking advantage of an app state team that just isn't, the same App State team we've seen uh, in recent years. There it is. Emory is laying the points with Missouri and Texas Tech, taking the points with Auburn and his alma mater, Louisiana. Love it. Uh, make sure you check him out on social media at F-Ball Game Plan. Check out his YouTube page, which is terrific, youtube.com slash football game plan you can find a football game plan and of course the draft guide that's the key it's going to be a wild year you're gonna to have to get a draft guide from someone and you have to get someone that knows about all these fcs guys that didn't even play this year footballgameplan.com slash 2021 draft guide that's the key a little bit of a different schedule this week already did the ross tucker football podcast we won't have even money podcast till Wednesday. Traveling, I got Utah State and Air Force Thursday night. Emory, looking forward to that. 9.30, so flying out to Utah tomorrow morning. So Power Rankings Tuesday will be posted shortly after midnight. Other than that, the keg is kicked. We are all tapped out. Thanks for listening to the College Draft Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Fantasy Feast, Even Money, and the Business of Sports. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.